Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's Busiest Music Nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Pusha T album, Daytona. The latest album here from Cocaine Cowboy, Mr. Pusha T. President of Kanye's Good Music, uh, formerly of Clips. You should know who the hell he is by now. If you haven't, please listen to Hell Hath No Fury and, and get a grip. Please, please, you're, you're embarrassing me. Pusha T's artistic high watermarks in the 2000s are, are a thing of legend. And even though he may have found himself a steady paycheck at Kanye's good music, uh, let's be honest. Pusha's solo efforts since breaking off from his brother in clips so far uh, could be better. He was severely punching under his weight on Fear of God 2. My Name Is My Name had amazing highlights, amazing high points like numbers on the boards and nostalgia, but was also painfully inconsistent and had a lot of lackluster tracks in the track listing too. King Push was pretty good, but not really the splash that you expect an artist of Pusha T's magnitude to be making. The thing was also titled as a prelude, but what it was a prelude to, I I, I don't know. I kind of had the, the, the feeling at the time that this was just going to be a taster to something bigger coming around the corner, but whatever that thing is, it doesn't seem to have happened. Uh, 2015, the year that album dropped, was also the same year Push was named President of Good Music, so who knows, maybe, maybe that's been dominant his time. Which brings us to Daytona, which going into it, I admit I was a little skeptical. The announcement of this thing pretty much felt like a surprise. Suddenly there was that album cover change to the Whitney Houston bathroom photo, which just kind of felt like an attempt to grab headlines. It may have been on the part of Kanye West, but still. It's just a scant seven tracks in 21 minutes, and Kanye is on the boards on every single cut, which it, it's, it's been a while since Kanye has so thoroughly produced a project like this. Kanye's beats on this thing are dark, heavy, luxurious. They're artsy and loaded with great grooves and sharp soul samples. Also, nearly all the instrumentals on this thing segue into one another pretty effectively, so it kind of makes these seven tracks play pretty seamlessly. Now, of course, when it comes to Push, he's back on his A-game, lyrically, and executing in his trademark, very expressive, mid-paced flow, something that he's kind of grown into over the years where he just really makes you feel every word coming out of his mouth. He's really one of these artists who tries to make every single bar count and puts this fear in me that makes me just pay very close attention to everything he's saying out of fear that I'll miss a double entendre or some kind of coded simile. He's truly a rapper's rapper, and even though this thing is just 21 minutes, I would say Push's efforts here are as valuable as 60 minutes of music with how much play I'm gonna get out of this thing. Across the seven tracks here, I would say that Pusha and, and Kanye just kind of bring out the best in one another. The opener, If You Know You Know, features of course these really dense drug raps, sharply cut guitar samples wailing away against some delayed vocal samples and noisy effects. It's psychedelic, it's industrial, it's trunk knocking, features quotable that are equal parts gritty and extravagant, like the company I keep is not corporate enough, child rebel soldier, you ain't orphan enough. The if you know you know mantra on the track is really telling as well because it essentially communicates that if you've done his dirt, if you've lived his life, if you've been paying attention to his trajectory, you know what he's talking about. Because Pusha is one of those artists who truly kind of puts a bit of a veil over a lot of what he's saying, and you have to kind of put in that extra effort to peel it back to get the full meaning of what he's on about. Next track, The Games We Play, feels incredibly raw and straightforward. It's live and direct like a, like a freestyle over a set of really twangy guitar leads and vintage horn hits. One verse after another on this thing about excess, extravagance. It's pretty much an ode to all things that drug money buys. With the vivid verses on this track and Pusha T's really evocative word choice, like the track just feels lawless, it feels powerful, it feels kind of evil. Then comes maybe the only real weak moment in the track listing here. The song Hard piano, which features a pretty big eye roll of a line right at the start. Rick Ross's feature on this thing is just okay, and even though the hook on this thing is epic, That's where the keys go. I feel like the dreamy piano samples and droney synths and super faint percussion just kind of wash into each other in a really bland way. Just not as much push to this instrumental as I would have liked. We then have the infinitely better Comeback Baby, which has this subterranean, super simple bass line. Very minimal drums on this thing too. It's so little, but it works so perfectly, and transitioning <laughs> from the intro and into the chorus, Kanye just has these really generous soul samples of George Jackson and the mighty Hannibal, taking what 
sounds like undoctored chunks of their songs and just plopping it into this song. In a way, it comes off kind of low effort, but I won't deny that it is catchy. Picking these tracks is pretty symbolic as well as both of them deal in addiction, reflecting back to Pusha T's depicted addiction to drug dealing, kind of painting this picture of a drug kingpin with a bit of a heart of gold. Blew through thousands, we made millions, cocaine soldiers, once civilians, bought hose Hondas, took care children, let my pastor build out buildings. I also love that white on white tester and black on black Tesla line, that was sharp. That yin yang line talking about how real ones bring balance to the game he's in was fantastic too. Then we have the eerily beautiful Santeria, which features these weeping guitar samples, ghostly backing instrumentation, heavy bass, a chilling hook sung in Spanish, and one nasty beat switch up in the last leg that sounds like just some really sinister funk. It's a more forlorn moment on the album as Push kind of drops numerous lyrical references to the recent death of his road manager, Devon Pickett. The track generally just kind of feels like him portraying more of the downsides of this life that he's led. Ye and Push meet lyrically on the track What Would Meek Do? Push's references to Meek on this track are absolutely perfect. Talking about having an angel and a devil on his shoulder, what would he do? Then he's portraying himself kind of popping wheelies on the bike and telling the judge to Akinelli. Put it in your mouth. Kanye's appearance on the track, I, I guess I'm a little torn on it. I mean, is it one of his best features? No, not necessarily. It just sort of seems like him trying to stoke more flames in this recent drama that he's been embroiled in. It's kind of goofy and off the wall and I enjoy that characteristic about it. The surrogate child line was interesting. The seven pill night line was interesting. The beginning pulled over with a MAGA hat line was interesting. Also talking about how he's showing the scars so so he's, he's seal. Yuck. The song Infrared is the closer of the album and has probably generated the most conversation around this record. Given the track is this huge Drake, Little Wayne, Bird man diss, with Pusha T saying it was written like Nas but it came from Quentin, which is a smart line. I like Drake's response to the song too, but it makes me wonder because Pusha has been throwing bars at Drake for years. While this track was really good, why respond now unless what he said really kind of got to you? I kind of saw Pusha T's attack on Lil Wayne as even more savage than that of Drake, which of course could have motivated Drake as well, but just portraying Wayne as this guy who's stuck in the industry, he can't retire, and he has all flash, no fire is pretty nasty. The beat to me didn't really steal the show on this one, but it didn't really need to because it's, it's really just kind of pushes lines and his viciousness and his monstrous delivery that kind of made the track. And overall, I mean, this thing is a tight little project. It's kind of an EP masquerading as an album. It's, it's a secret EP or maybe a mini album or something, but it's so solid. It's so watertight. I can't really hate on any single moment of it. Sure, the lyrical content, the substantive content is nothing really new for Pusha T. This is pretty much the <laughs> stomping grounds he's been inhabiting for years now. And quite honestly, a record that was longer, but consistently of this quality would have made for a better listen. But still, you just kind of have one great lyrical banger after another. Just very good writing, very good flows, very good delivery, very good production. And I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this thing. Tran? Zition, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Uh, over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel, Anthony Fantano, forever.